Good morning and welcome to the last video of this tutorial series on plant simulation. On this occasion, we're going to learn how to use experimentation to analyze complex scenarios and optimize our models. To better understand it, let's optimize the model from the previous video and find out how we could increase the parts per hour on both drains by modifying the capacity of the different conveyors. We will achieve this by launching several simulations with different capacity configurations and seeing which combination gives us the best results. To make the work easier, the first thing we will do is to simplify the model and replace all the conveyors with buffers, which for all practical purposes is a simplified version of a conveyor, to be able to modify its capacity more easily. With this new model, we will analyze different capacity configurations, and when we have the optimal one, we would simply have to do a calculation to find the equivalent length of each conveyor. We must next define how long must each simulation last in order to get valid results. In our case, we are going to define a period of two complete days for each simulation, including an hour for ramping up. Hence, we shall define an end time of two days plus one hour. We could do these tests manually, but fortunately, Plant Simulation offers us a tool that greatly facilitates this work, the Experiment Manager, which we will find in the Tools folder. If it does not appear, you will have to import it manually by clicking on the button Manage Class Library. Just like with the rest of the advanced objects in the Tools tab, the Experiment Manager has a configuration menu that is somewhat different from the rest, but very intuitive. In the Definition tab, we will need to define three key elements. On one hand, by clicking on the button, Define Output Values, we will define the variables we want to analyze, which in our case will be the hourly production of the different drains. Therefore, we will write drain.stat throughput per hour. And as a description, we will write Productivity 1. And we will indicate that the higher the result, the better. By double-clicking on high values are better until it shows true. In this way, the experiment manager will present the results to us in an ordered way. We will repeat the same configuration, but now for the drain one. We save the changes, and then we will define which parameters we want to change in each experiment by activating the Use Input Values option. In our case, we want to test different capacities of each buffer. Hence, we write the path of each individual buffer followed by dot capacity to indicate the capacity attribute. Finally, it would be necessary to indicate to the experiment manager in define experiments which test we want to do, that is, which combinations of capacity we want to test to calculate the resulting productivities. This table gets updated automatically based on the parameters that we've established in the previous phase, where every column represents one of those parameters and each row signifies a distinct experiment. For example, if we wanted to test two scenarios where in one all conveyors have a capacity of 10 and in the other of 20, we would write this. But what happens if we want to try with 10 more scenarios? or we want to know all the possible combinations of values for each buffer. For that, we have a specific tool from the Experiment Manager, which is called Multi-Level Experiment Design, that we will find in the tab tools. Here we can define the maximum and minimum values we want to test for each input, and how we want to increase this value between each scenario. For example, in order to cover a wide range of options, we want to test all the combinations of buffer capacities between 10 and 135 with an increment of 25 pieces between each scenario. So for each buffer, it will test a capacity of 10, 35, 60, 85, 110, and 135 pieces. Now we can proceed and save the modifications at this point. The experiment manager is going to determine the total simulations needed for the analysis of every possible combination. We can observe that the quantity of experiments that needs to be carried out has the potential to escalate quite rapidly. Should each test be executed in a single second, the total time required to examine every single possibility would be 466 hours, equating to nearly 20 full days of continuous simulation. This is unfeasible, so we are going to say no, and we are going to reduce the scope of our experiments. To begin, we will analyze which of the buffers are the most saturated 
as those will be where we are most interested in expanding capacity. To do this, we are going to insert an additional chart, then drag all the buffers into it and define it to monitor the occupancy levels. At this moment, we will open the graph and run a normal simulation study. If we look at the percentage of time that each buffer has been full, only 5 exceed 20% of the time, so it doesn't make much sense to expand the capacity for the other three. Therefore, we go back to the experiment manager and we will limit the inputs to those five buffers. Furthermore, in the experiment design tool, we will define that instead of up to 135, we calculate up to 85 with the same increment of 25 parts. If we save the changes, now it calculates 1024 combinations, something much more affordable, and that we should be able to calculate in a matter of minutes. If we save the modifications, we will see that it has automatically updated the experiment definition table with all the possible combinations. However, before conducting the study, there is one last step missing. Our simulation incorporates elements of randomness, including occurrences like station malfunctions or the varying distribution ratios of components. Therefore, to truly understand the impact of this stochastic nature on different input combinations, we are required to conduct multiple runs for each scenario. For that, the experiment manager allows us to define the number of observations per experiment. We must proceed with caution, since the value we indicate here will directly multiply the number of executions we have calculated before. To avoid increasing the number of simulations too much, for this example we will indicate two observations per experiment and apply the changes. Now we are ready to initiate the experiment manager by first clicking the reset button and then clicking the start control. As we can see, the experiment manager initiates the model autonomously in the background and evaluates every single combination that we've specified. Once the experimentation is complete, a message like this will pop up. In my case, it took about two minutes. Furthermore, it will generate a report with the results of the study. Here we will find the results for each of the scenarios. But at the very bottom, it will indicate which scenarios have achieved better productivity in each of the drains, allowing us to optimize our model. Moreover, in the Evaluation tab of the Experiment Manager, we can see a more detailed report and even graphed by output. Although the experiment manager has more tools than we can show in this video, with the ones we've seen, we have learned to perform a simple analysis and observed its potential to enhance our work processes. With this last exercise, we conclude this series of tutorials on plant simulation, where we have learned from scratch to model complex flows, parameterize them, obtain results, and optimize them through experimentation. If you found this interesting and would like to enhance the capabilities of your simulations beyond what is allowed by the standard objects we have seen so far, I invite you to take a look at my other video series on programming in SimTalk, where we will learn to program from scratch with examples and without the need for prior experience with any other programming language. Regards, and until next time,